Hi everyone, it's me, Sarah Jew with the Enosburg Public Library, and welcome to our video of today for Steam. If you guys haven't yet, we still have some bags available here in the um, children's room. There's a table by the window, and there's a few bags left for your supplies that you need for today's Steam, and also what you'll need for Friday's um, Storytime Craft. Just a reminder, we will be having virtual story time on Friday because it is Christmas Eve. We will be closed from the 23rd to the 25th, and we will reopen again on Monday the 27th. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> we'll be open again Monday the 27th, regular hours, and then uh, that's, that's it for now. Anyway, so... Today, we are making our own candy cane ornaments. Now, I wanted to show you what you could be having. So I made one the other day so you guys could see the product fully done and finished. And this is what it turned out to look like. Look how sparkly. I'm trying to do the makeup thing so you can see it better. Look how sparkly it is. So this is my ornament that I'm going to put on the tree. So if you guys want to do this, come right over, grab your stuff, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to grab our pipe cleaners. We will have two, one red, and one white. Next thing you will need is a ruler. You will have or need a piece of string. Or yarn and then ugh, you're gonna need a cup so um I actually wanted to talk to you a little bit about what happened and why it happened hold on I got notes here because oh, I try to remember all the words I've been sitting here all day so I wanted to talk about um the science behind it a little bit so it's a solution mixer oh you're gonna need borax this is why we um, also need to make sure that you have adult supervision with you to help you if you're old enough to do it by yourself, just to make sure someone's standing next to you to um, make sure things go well. And if you are the adult and are very little, we are going to need hot water. So I actually used, um, I'm using Keurig hot water. You can boil some, but that water gets hot enough to do what I needed to do. That's exactly how I got this um, to look the way that it did. But if you prefer to boil a little pot of water, that is fine. So um, I wanted to show you this cup. This what I'm going to reuse this cup that I used the other day. So as you can tell, can you see some of the crystals formulated on the bottom of the glass and a little bit of the top? So this is what I wanted to talk to you about. However, okay, as the water cools down with the borax inside of it, it can no longer to hold on to as more, much borax as it could when hot. So that means that there's less room for the borax to dissolve. Um, so it begins to separate from the water and bond with other borax molecules on the candy cane. So hence the candy cane will get all these crystals. And then if it cannot... It will go on to the string as well, because I have some on my string. And it will also form on the sides of whatever container you have. So it's kind of really cool. Um, I'll get to more about that. So first things first, I am going to grab my hot water. Just kidding, we're not going to grab your hot water yet. You're going to grab your ruler. And you're going to grab your um, pipe cleaners. We are going to measure them to about six inches. That's exactly what I have right here so here's our inches one two three four five six now you can go a little bit further if you want um the six inches happen to fit in my container perfectly to cover because you want the water to cover it all the way and my container was able to do that so i didn't go any further but you will I didn't have regular scissors. I literally just used one of these little designer <laughs> ones. But here we are. So, you will have extra. So, if you want to make two candy canes, you are more than welcome to. But first, we're going to start with this one. 
Let me make sure. Let's make sure. This, oh, that's the wrong one. Did I just mess up? No, nope, we're good. Okay, so we're going to use this one. You'll have a little bit smaller on the side. And what we're going to do next, we're going to make sure they're lined up with each other, right? Stretch it out a little bit. And then we're just going to start twist the top. And we're just going to start twisting. Oops, if I can. All the way. So it looks like a candy cane with the red twisted into the white. Voila, bam, you have your stick of candy cane. Huh, so if you want to curl it up like this one, you're going to just literally bend it like a candy cane. Voila, you have that part, right? Next, we are going to tie, excuse me, tie a knot. Oops, I should take my sweater off, but I am so cold. I mean, I I'm just going to keep it. <laughs> just one. You don't need to go any further than that. I mean, if you want to, you can. So I'll tie another one. Oops. And voila. So what I did up here, I believe, is called... I'm going to do the slip knot. Correct me if I'm wrong. It might be the wrong knot name. So I'm going to wrap this around my finger, right? I have little chonky fingers, so if you don't want to use your whole finger, you don't have to. You can make the hole a little smaller, but you want it big enough so you can loop the rest of those other strings through. And you're just going to make a little knot at the top, just like that. If you cannot do that, you can ask your um, parent or guardian to help you out with that. That's totally fine. Um, not so they're really fun to learn how to use, but those are our basic one, one to go around, and one so we can just have a loop. And we are gonna when we get to this part, we're gonna use a pencil, or you can use a skewer or anything that'll hold this up. So when you put it into the container, it'll stay like that. There's also another method you can do. So if you have a yogurt container, um like the person where I got this information from and how to make it. They used um, a yogurt container and they cut in the top of it, of the top part of the container, and they stuck their string through that and tied a little knot there and had it like put the top on it and let it sit there. But you don't need to do that. So now you're going to need to get your hot water. So like I said, you can either use a cure egg like I did. That should be hot enough water for to do what I did before. Um, you are also going to need borax. So, uh, I wrote it down somewhere. Oh, oh, maybe it, I think I wrote it in my thing. Hold on. Found it. So, you're going to need one cup of borax for four cups of water. Um, mine, my little container filled up 12 cups. So, the math behind that, and then I used the borax into the hot water. So... Let me go grab that and I'll show you how to do that. By the way, while that heats up, it did not use 12 cups. I used 12 ounces. <laughs> I was doing, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, that seems like a lot of cups just for a tiny little thing. So I use about, um, what did I say? One every four cups. I didn't use that much. I didn't, I used a good clump of this into it. I will use a measuring cup this time for you. So I'm like, I'll just use you know, one to see if the more it'll do anything. Um, like I said, I didn't really measure for this one. I just put it in enough, stirred um, the water until all the borax was dil diluted. Um, so while that heats up, I don't think I pressed the button. I pressed it now. So um, there's science actually behind it. So what we're going to be making is a solution. So a solution is a mixture, um, which a solute in this point of view, a borax, is dissolved and evenly distributed throughout the solvent, which a solvent would be the water. 
The reason many of the sol solutes will dissolve, solutes, solutes, so <laughs> solutes will dissolve into the water is due to the attraction between the solute's ions and the water's ions. So the temperature plays a really big role in how much this um, solute water can dissolve water. Molecule, the water molecules are spread out under any conditions of high heat, which allows the water to dissolve more than borax than it would if it was cold. Therefore, by heating the water um, before adding the borax, we can create a super saturated solution or a solution with more dissolved solute, aka borax in this, and then the solvent would be water. So it would normally dissolve. So like I explained earlier, so as the water cools down, the borax is trying to find things to attach to because now that the water is cold, that means there's less room to dissolve. So then it starts to crystallize around the stuff. You hear that noise? It's done. I'll be right I cannot find my handy dandy measuring cup, so I'm going to use this ginormous tablespoon. You're also going to need a wooden spoon or a wooden, I have a wooden popsicle stick to use as a mixer. So what I'm going to do, scoot everything over, and I'm going to grab some borax. If you feel more comfortable to wear um, gloves, you are more than welcome to, especially for your little ones. So I'm going to continue. I'm just trying to show you with your job. I'm just gonna drop it right in there. And I'm just gonna put a good amount in there. So the um the measuring that I gave you, one cup or four cups of water, is just an idea on what you should use. So if you want to use four cups of water, you're more than welcome to. Um okay, yeah. so next thing you're gonna do. Because always make sure that you have something on the bottom so when you create a mess, you don't get it all over the place. Sarah, 101. So you're going to take your wooden spoon and you're going to keep mixing it. You mix it a good amount until it dissolves. If you have some little um, solid parts in there, just make sure you crunch it down a little bit so you can really get it going. And you just keep mixing until you notice that all the borax is dissolved. And you can like, kind of already tell the difference between the the buoyancy, I believe if that's the right word, is to when you put the solution in it, you can see it, it looks like the water got thicker. Like it's still very liquidy, but it definitely got thick. If you can notice that, let me know because that's what I see. Like, pay attention to the beginning, and then pay attention as you mix the difference that the water is. So I had little crystals on the bottom here that were forming, as I showed earlier, so I'm just crunching those a little bit. I don't, I'm not worried about dissolving those things. So, you can tell, definitely has dissolved, and I have dissolved most of it. Or, nope, definitely I've dissolved all of it. So it's going to be foggy looking. And you're going to take your pencil, a.k.a. skewer, a.k.a. You can use another popsicle stick, whatever you need. You're going to put that over this, and you're just going to put this right in there. And mine fits perfectly, and it leans a little bit, so it's fully covered. You are going to want to make sure that your water is fully covering it. So whatever, actually, whatever container you're using to make this, you're going to make sure that you use that container to measure your water out. So I'm going to put this aside. And that is all you're going to need to do. And what a little bit more you're going to need to do is patience. At least wait 12 to 24 hours before you take this out. You're gonna leave it alone, you're gonna put it aside somewhere, and maybe like, if you have a timer, put a timer on for six hours, see if you start noticing anything. 
see, water's clear now. So you can see the borax starting to a little bit. Not right away, I mean, but I had it here already. So, yes, you're going to need to wait at least 12 to 24 hours until you get this. Mine, I made mine Saturday morning, and I just took this out today at 12 o'clock. Today is Monday. I took this out today at 12 o'clock, so a little bit more, more than 24 hours. But that's what this looked like. I'm sure it was already done processing after that because it got cold in here especially. But, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. When you're done, hang it on your tree. Tell Santa all about it. You know, it's a lot of fun. Anyways, I'm all set with this video. Don't forget, we're not having your story time this week. We're closed uh, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. We'll be back open the 27th. Also, next week, <coughs> excuse me, um, next week we will be closed the 31st first, and then we'll be back on the 3rd of January, the Monday, I believe that's the calendar. Anyways, I'll make sure you guys all see that before so you don't come in, but we will have another virtual story time on that Friday as well. And I will be getting a bunch of, like, packets for you guys. Not packets. My craft bags for, specifically, the New Year's. Anyways, one thing at a time. We'll just get Christmas with, done with. I hope you guys enjoy your day and have a wonderful Christmas. It's really great to finally have some snow on the ground. I'm actually hoping it sticks because I want to go sledding. Anyways, love you guys. Have a great day. And I will see you on Friday. Bye.